Okay, hello YouTube. This is basically a requested video. It's going to probably be three or four or five parts, I don't know. Various parts will be called what they are. Uh, somebody asked, because they noticed for the most part I use Linux as my primary operating system. They were wondering about, you know, what are the system requirements, what do they do, yada, 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 yada and so forth. I'm going to answer a lot more in our video, more than they requested. Basically, just go over from the start. First off, let's start with hardware. You know, whether or not you want to really run Linux on your system or not. One of the, as a general rule of thumb for Linux, certain hardware to avoid, for the most part, is ATI cards. I'm not to say they won't work. It's just, there's almost no problem with NVIDIA or Intel cards in Linux. The newer Intel cards, not the older Intel cards. Uh, and ATI cards can be a problem. That, as a, for, as a general rule of thumb, you want a graphics card with 512 or higher. Uh, for a modern Linux distro, you want... I want to say a 1.5 to 2 gigahertz or higher processor. And you want at least a gig of RAM, preferably two. Given that most systems come with, you know, 4 gig these days, that's not an overwhelming system requirement. And even 10 year old systems, you can put 2 gig in if you really want to. So, so and, and the reason, however, these are base guidelines. It depends what you want to do what you're going to do. Uh, the person who requested this video is actually using an ATI Radeon card. Like I said, as a general rule of thumb, ATI is harder to get working with Linux because of the endless ATI driver issues on all three operating systems. It's not unique to Linux. It's just ATI is weird. That being said, this particular system meets almost none of those requirements and runs Linux perfectly well. This is an old R52 IBM computer. It is running an ATI 128 megabyte graphics card. It had a whopping 1 gigabyte of RAM. And it ran Linux fine. I never had a problem running Linux on this thing. To my surprise, when I installed Linux on it, it recognized what the ATI card was and installed the proper driver out the door. I didn't have to go online or anything. It recognized my Wi-Fi. It rec recognized everything. That was when I started to realize, okay, Linux has finally gotten here. Um, so it's in a later update. I then had to really, I had to then do a special tweak. But it took me five minutes in the forum searching for my graphics card to go. On this particular mobile graphics card, with this update, you must do this. And I went click, 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 and then everything's been working. Again. <laughs> Other thing you really want to avoid, and this is going to be a problem for all of you with laptops. I'm just going to violate a rule I've said. NVIDIA is the preferred graphics card with everything but shared graphics. Not that shared graphics isn't a bad thing, but you get some weird things. This system right here uh, has an NVIDIA graphics card that has actually a gig. So in every way, you know, 1024 right, by graphics as opposed to 512. So in every way, it should be superior to this one. In reality, this one shared winds up with some weird lag especially when doing the 3D effects, uh, such as the, you know, the floating wobbly windows and the uh, tiling of the windows, you know, the different rounds apart from the corner and stuff like that. I haven't tried this system yet with the 3.2 kernel, but I know if you're using older kernels, such as 2.8 or 2.7 or 2.6, you're going to have issues with these. And some distros are still using that. However, shared graphics can work fine. The reason I say that is this little EPC is using an entirely shared graphics. It's a netbook. They cheap got on everything on this thing. 
it runs fine and works. Using an Intel shared graphics. Little thing that Amy keeps hating. This is a reason Intel worked partially with the Linux community. They wanted these things to work. They realized that not working with Linux was a bad thing. So, at the end of the day, you're going to have to actually see, which is why I recommend a live CD disk rooms. So, th that's a rough cover of hardware. If you have more questions on that, post them in the same other thing. I will answer them back because I've kind of just raised over that very quickly in two minutes. So, five minutes. Now, let's go through your checklist. Things to have to begin installing Linux. Odds are your computer came with Windows 7. If it has XP on it, this is a non-issue. If your computer came with Windows 7, if possible, something you want to have before doing your Linux install is to beg, borrow, or steal a Windows upgrade disk or a Windows install disk of any kind. You have Home, Home, you have Pro, Pro, but odds are if you have Pro or Ultimate, you bought a machine in the store with Home and they sent you a, and they gave you a Pro or Ultimate disk from the store stock, so you'll have the disk. People, this is going to be a problem with people who, you know, their system came with Home 64 and run Home 64, and they weren't given the disk. So, like I said, if at all possible, beg, borrow, or steal. If the glitch that would require you to need this occurs to you, send me a private message, and I will figure out a way to give you an ISO of this disk. I will not give you a key. I do not support software piracy. You have a key on your machine if you really do need this thing for the valid use that I, you could have for it. I'm not going to help you steal Windows because I think you don't need to. It's not really a particularly good OS. But I don't like the fact that certain changes to this operating system have basically declared war on installing Linux in some cases. If you do everything we say to do in this tutorial, this will not be a problem and you will not need this. However, if you screw up a few steps, you might need this. So, second thing I recommend having before you get started is the drivers for your Wi-Fi card we're going to be doing here um, in the upcoming parts of the video is going to be a desktop so it has a PCI Wi-Fi uh, Linksys Wi-Fi card in there right I find this is like an 80 20 thing 80 to 95 percent of Wi-Fi cards are auto recognized by Linux it's people who have that obscure card also do not use a dongle do not use a little USB dongle Wi-Fi card. Use a PCI card or a built-in one or our You can get them to work. <laughs> you're going to have a little bit of a headache. And if your card's not recognized, the particular Linux disk driver we're going to be using will allow you to use the Windows driver to make it work in Linux. So, I'm not saying find the Linux driver, I'm saying download the Windows INF file. And I have the CD that came with the thing, but odds are you can find it online. <laughs> and of course, the next thing to do is to get download the Linux ISO and install it. In this case, I've burned it to a CD. We're going to be messing with PC Linux OS 2010 beta, which is part of why I've been putting this video off so long because I wanted to do that. Now we've covered the initial checklist and basic hardware cover. Most of you probably aren't going to watch this video or care about it. This was largely for noobs. And the next part, we'll actually get into the nitty-gritty of going through this. Peace out all.